What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 43 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be looking at partner trainers. First, we're going to look at how to create one, and then we're going to look at how to get one following us around in-game. And then, after that, we're going to look at how to remove them so they stop following us. And then, I'm going to put it all together in one big example, where we play through an area, and we have a partner trainer following us the whole time. And then at the very end, what I'm going to do is break down some of the rules, because partner trainers are pretty complex and they have a whole lot of intricacies to them. And with that said, let's get into it. So what I've got here is actually the Brendan event from the Route 3 map that comes with Pokemon Essentials, just kind of copied and pasted into my route. So here he is, it's basically the exact same. And um, I copied and pasted him into my route right here. And uh, then we're gonna look at him, kind of break him down. So the core of this event is the fact that there are two functions here called PB add dependency and register partner. Let's actually add dependency too, and I'll break down why that's important later. But essentially, what you're doing is you're adding a dependent event and having that event follow you around. And the second thing you're doing is you're registering a partner. The way that register partner works is you actually enter the trainer type and the name of that trainer, and it draws from your trainer's PBS file and just has him fight alongside you. So, those are the first two most important things to getting a trainer registered and following you, and we'll make our own very soon, and I'll show you an example of this. So, that's how you get them following you. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. First, let's make our own trainer that can follow us. So let's go into our trainer's PBS file. Ta-da. And uh, I've scrolled down here to where Brendan is defined. Pokemon Trainer Brendan. What we can do is actually copy this and paste. There we go, and let's make our own. Let's make it so that way instead of Brennan following us, it's May. And I believe that there is a Pokemon Trainer type just called Pokemon Trainer May. Give her name, the name May. And we could give her two Pokemon if we want. We could just give her one also. Either way is fine. Let's give her a... Uh, what do I want to give her? Let's give her a Blaziken. That'd be pretty cool. And uh, let's make it level 37. It's a pretty strong Blaziken. Cool, there we go. So May has one Blaziken. So now what we want is May on our side. We want her fighting alongside us. So let's make an event and have our May. So what I've done here is I've made a little forest. It's not very great because there's just like a one gap space here. So it kind of funnels you. So it forces you. But essentially, this will be the area where we have May. What I would like to see, like ideally, is like a long forest map. But this is just for an example. So let's make a little May. Let's choose her. Let's see, I gotta scroll down quite a ways to find her. But she'll be there. She'll be here in our trainers. Let's see. That's not correct. There she is. There's our May. Ta-da! And uh, let's make it so that way she only appears if the switch... Actually, no. Let's make it so that way she's always present. But then make a new event page where she disappears if the switch forest beaten is on. So she'll always show up, but then she'll disappear if the forest has been beaten. Cool. So that's already pretty easy. There we go. There is our May. Now let's make it so that way she starts following us. So what we need to do here is make a new event where when you step on it, player touch, something happens. And uh, this event should only happen once. So let's make a new event page where if the self switch A is on, this won't happen anymore. Cool. And then we'll turn self switch A on when you step on it. So when you step on it, it turns self switch A on and then it doesn't occur anymore. So now let's actually get the meat of our event. Let's let's get some uh, let's get some substance to this. So let's actually copy our Brendan over. He's a good example. Ta-da! And now let's start picking at his bones and uh, put it into our event. So essentially, we need to add a dependency and register a partner. So first, let's add our dependency. Let's copy that and paste it into ours. Cool. So the way that this function add dependency to works is you feed it an event ID, the name of the event, and then the number of the common event that's called when you interact with that event. So for example, at event ID means the event that you've talked to. But for ours, we're not gonna do that. For ours, we're gonna go and get May's event, which is three. Simple, cool. Oh, I guess I didn't save the change. Boom, but I still had it copied, so it's easy. Cool, 
So instead of add event ID, we'll just type in three, because that's May's event ID. Instead of Brendan, we'll name this May. Cool. And then we'll make this four, because essentially what we want is to make a new common event. And I guess I should break those down now real quick after I fix the formatting of this. Excuse me. There we go. So we've entered the event ID, the name of the event, and then the common event ID. Let's go to common events. Common events can be found near tile sets. So if you click on this button up here, that'll take you to tile sets, and then right next to it are common events. You can make a whole bunch of them, but essentially what these are, are events that the game can call at any time, and you can call common events at any time. So these should be common events that you use. Simple enough, it's a very good name. But um, what I've done here is, I've made two different versions of the partner removal. The first one is the default one that comes with essentials, and the second one is a little bit of a tweak. It basically condenses everything down into one function. So the way that this used to work is when you talked to Brendan, he would say, hey, do you want me to stop following you? You could say yes or no. If you say yes, then it'll remove him and unregister him. Because remember, when we want the partner to follow us, we, uh, <laughs> if we set them as a dependency, sorry, and then we register them. So we do the exact opposite when we remove him. We remove the dependency and unregister him. But you can combine those two into one function called PB remove dependencies. That comes in the default essentials. I can actually pull it up in the script right here. It's in the P field dependent events script towards the very top actually. The way that it works is it removes all dependent events that are following you and unregisters all partners. Sounds pretty good, it works. So that'll be what we use when we want to eventually remove May as a partner. But right now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We just want to add her as a partner. We just want her following us around. So this add dependency May should add her as a partner who will follow us around. And then this register will allow them to appear in battle. So let's play that. And instead of Pokemon Trainer Brendan, let's have it say, oh no, let's have it say May. Cool. And then the name of our trainer is May. Very nice. So there is a third field you can choose to enter here if you want, such as comma zero. The way that this works is this uses the party ID of that trainer. This is only like for advanced stuff, essentially like if you have a rival who has like version one, version two, version three, this would be where you put one, two, or three. But it defaults to zero, and we only have one May, so we can, don't have to worry about entering that. But cool. So what this should do is May should start following us, and then she'll show up in our battles. And let's add a little bit of flavor text here, where it'll just say, like, Hey, I'm gonna follow you. There we go. Cool. So, after that event, May will be following us. Let's test it and see how it looks. There's a lot of weird little caveats to using follower uh, trainers, and I'll break some of those down a little bit later, but you'll see that when you start having people follow you, things can get a little weird or there's some things that don't work exactly how you'd expect. But in general, the way it works is they'll help you out in wild battles. They'll help you out against uh, double battle trainers. They won't help you out against single battle trainers, though. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's move forward and let's step on this event. Huh. Hey, I'm gonna follow you. Whoa, okay. Whoa, there she is. Whoa, holy crap. Okay. So she kind of just teleported to me there. Ideally, I would have set a move route and have her move to behind me, and then the event would end. But yeah, here we go. We've got a follower trainer. Or a follower. Uh, yeah. So I set her common event to four, but I didn't make common event four yet, so when I talk to her, nothing should happen. But if I get into a double battle in the wild, it makes all the, ba it makes all the wild battles double, by the way. Here we go. I didn't set the uh, metadata of this map to outside, as you can see, but here we go. I've got my 20 Kadabra, she's got her level 37 Blaziken. Boom, it's working perfectly. Let's get the heck out of this battle, because it's very scary. So now she's following us. So here I also have set up a double battle trainer. If I talk to her, she'll say, hey, get ready for a double battle. Boom, I've got one Pokemon. My uh, partner trainer has one Pokemon. The double battle begins. That's pretty nice. So... Now that I've shown both of those off, that they're working, let's set up the common events, and then let's get it set up so that way May can be removed. Let's do that now, cool. So when I talk to her, it plays common event four, which right now is nothing, but we can make it say something. We can make it so that way it's, um, let's see. 
May, and then slash R to make it red. Hey, PN. Let's get through this forest. There we go. So when you talk to her, she'll say, hey, get, let's get through the for this forest. If you want, you could make it so that way when you talk to her, it removes her. But I'd prefer to have you progress through the point, uh, pro progress through the game, essentially, and then have it remove her later. But yeah, so um, did I not save? Okay, I didn't save. I have to give it a name. I'll call it May. Eh, simple enough. So, yeah, there's our common event for ours, but if you want, there's other common events you can take a look at. Cool. So when you talk to her, she'll say, hey, let's get through the forest. Pretty simple. So now what we need to do is at the end of the forest, let's have a little event where May leaves us. Very sad, I know, but it has to be done. So let's make a new event on player touch, and let's make it so that the event only plays once. Uh, self switch A on. Let's make it so self switch A on appears again here. Just a good little thing to do if you want to make an event that only plays once. Cool. So when you step on it, let's make it call that other function. The one that I used in this. PB remove dependencies. She'll say, uh, it'll, this is going to be a heart wrenching, uh, heart wrenching end of our partner trainer, but she'll say, sorry slash PN. This is the end of the forest. I gotta go. Cool. So then when we call this function, she'll leave. But let's make it a little bit, let's make it nice. Let's make it a nice little end. Let's change the screen color tone to pure black for 10 frames. And then let's make it wait uh, 14 frames. Then remove dependencies. And let's play a little sound effect for when she leaves. I like to use door exit. It's one of my favorite freaking sound effects in the whole game. It's pretty good. Door enter's all right too, but door exit, door exit's where it's at. Yeah, give me that, okay. Door exit, cool. Now change screen color tone back to normal over 20 frames, and then let's just wait 20 frames. Cool, so essentially that, at the end of the forest, May will leave us, and the core of that is just calling remove dependencies. So, let's play through our area. Save the changes, you betcha, cool. So, you're probably asking yourself, there's probably some weird things I can do to break this, get to bug out. So far, Pokemon Essentials has been doing a great job of making sure that partner trainers aren't too freaky. They don't allow you to fly when you have a partner trainer. They don't allow you to surf when you have a partner trainer. They only participate in double trainer battles, not single double battles. So far, it's pretty good stuff. Hey, I'm gonna follow you. Okay. Whoa, when she teleports. Cool. So that's something I could still fix. I'll work on that next, I guess, if I want to make it polished. But here we go, we got May. I talked to her, she says, hey, let's get through this forest. Good, good partner trainer, I like it. I like that enthusiasm, that's what I want in a partner trainer, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I get to the end. Sorry Red, this is the end of the forest, I gotta go. <gasps> May, she left me, just like all the others. But yeah, so uh, there she goes. So if I step on this tile again, she won't follow me. Pretty good stuff. And if I go and step on this again, she won't follow me. Cool. If I really wanted to polish it up... Oh yeah, there is... Let's see. I need to test something. This might be a problem. I need to set that switch when she leaves. Otherwise, she might reappear. Let's take a look. Fingers crossed. If my brain works correctly, she will reappear. Cool. So that's one small little thing. Um... Part, the partner trainer will return when they're removed as a dependency if you leave the map and come back. Unless you do this switch trick that I'm going to show you right now. So May is always here. She's always standing there unless Forest Beaten is on. So when she leaves, let's set Forest Beaten to on. Control switches. Actually, no, let's do it. Let's do it when the screen is black. Let's do it when uh, nobody can see. Control switches. Forest Beaten on. There we go, cool. And if we really wanted to, we could make it so that way you can't leave the forest after uh, accepting May. So what we could do here is when you step on this, you could control switch and we could call this forest started. There we go, cool. So if forest started, no, that sets forest started to on. So let's make a new one where if player touch if the switch forest started is on, then what will happen here is May will tell you, like, let's do this. She'll say, hey, 
back to the forest, you bozo. There you go. And then it'll set a player move route to the right, twice. There we go. Cool, so this should prevent you from being able to leave the forest once it's started. Cool. And then uh, we can set forest started off here. There's other ways that you could have done that, but this is just a, a simple way. Forest started, set that to off. I mean, another way that I could have done that is just make another event page on this, where like if forest beaten is on. But you know, you got options in Pokemon Essentials. It's very robust. So let's play through our example now. We've got our partner trainer defined. We've got the start basically all set up. We've got the end basically all set up. Let's uh, let's try this. Let's see how it goes. So I enter the forest. Hey, I'm gonna follow you. Oh yeah, she still teleports. That's something that I could fix. But uh, if I try to leave, she'll say, hey, get back to the forest, you bozo. Oh, okay. I guess back I go. Oh, never mind. I'm try to leave. Oh, dang it. I can't leave. That's all optional. It's all dependent on your design, whatever you want to do. So if I battle that double trainer, that'll work. If I battle some wild Pokemon, I'll get into a wild double battle. Let's just show this off one more time because it's kind of cool. Look at that. Oh, that's one more thing I forgot to mention real quick. So what we just saw when this battle started was May's back sprite. Let me, uh, let me leave this forest and she'll leave me. May, no, baby, come back. Okay, so... In that battle, May had a back sprite. If you use any trainers that don't have back sprites, then they just will appear as nothing. Let me show you what I mean. So, May, Pokemon trainer May, is trainer type three. She's already been defined and she's number three. So, if I go into my folders and go to graphics, characters, and scroll way, 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 way down, you can see right here that May uses front sprite three. And, let me find it, sorry, here we go, and back sprite 3. That is file tr back 003. So for example, if you want to have a bug catcher follow you, and you don't have a tr back 010, then the, tr the bug catcher just won't have a, bra a back sprite. So if, you know, if Brendan follows me, he's trainer type 2, he will have a back sprite, but if you want to make your own custom trainer and you give them number like 72, 73, make sure that they have a back sprite 72 or 73. That would be what's associated with them. So I think that's about everything. Now it's time for me to run down my crazy list of reasons why Pokemon, I mean the follow trainers work the way they do. And I guess before I hit that list, here's one more little thing I was gonna mention. There's add dependency and add dependency too. The reason we use add dependency too is because it's better than add dependency. It calls an event ID instead of just an event, an event name, and a common event. This right here is the most important thing. It allows you to link a common event to the dependent event and then use that. It's pretty great. So let me just break down some of the uh, rules for partner trainers and then this video will be over. So I wrote down some rules. Let's see. Some little things you might notice, um, I can actually go in-game to show this one off. When you walk across a map transition with a partner trainer, they will kind of warp. They warp a lot. See right there? Bop, bop. It's a weird thing. Um, it, I don't know if there's any way around it or any way to fix it, but it is one like known issue that I've come across. Let's see what else we got. One thing that's weird that I encountered was the battle continued, a double, a wild battle continued after my Pokemon fainted and my partner trainers was still alive and it just continued until the end of the battle. Um, let's see what else we got. They don't help in single trainer battles, they only help in double trainer battles, which is better than nothing, but yeah, so if the trainer that you're going against, let me get out of this, this is kind of loud. If the trainer that you're battling does not have this comment here, double battle equal true, or double battle true, or they're not like a double battler, then um, the partner trainer just won't assist in that battle. Let's see what else have I written down here. Okay, so if you lose in a trainer battle, or if you lose in a wild battle, you will go back to the Pokemon Center. And the... Oh yeah, that, that kind of ruins the logic of my May event. Let's go check this out right now. 
If I use a self switch to make it only play once and then I lose the battle, I might never get May again. So, Pokemon, uh, the partner trainers will um, return to their original location if you lose the battle. So, like that Brandon one that I've set up. Like when you leave the map and come back. Let me use Debug to force a defeat on this. And let's uh, let's crack this down right now. No. Treat this battle as a loss. Yes. Oh no, I lost. Dang it. Ugh, I didn't want to lose. Ah, I'm just kidding. I totally did. So, I lost the battle. The uh, Nurse Joy talks to me. She talks my ear off. She heals the Pokemon. Like you do. Cool. So I think my May event might actually be broken. It's not a very good example if it breaks. I'm sorry, viewers. Let's go over here. Okay, May's still there. She says, hey, get back to the forest, you bozo. And now it's broken. The reason it is broken is because that self-switch A event played, and then <laughs> it never plays again. So let me, uh, let me fix that, and I'll get back to you guys. I'm sorry about that. Let's cut. Okay, there we go. So I fixed it. Essentially, the way it works now is this event right here, the forest started, hey, get back to the forest, you bozo, is in front of the one that actually starts it. They actually starts the forest sequence. So the, uh, when you step on this, the player will move to the right, three spaces. May will say, hey, I'm gonna follow you, and then she'll move to behind you. And then forest started will turn on. And then this switch will only not occur if forest beaten is on. And then the forest beaten can still use the self switch method, but the forest start should play even if I lose a battle. So let's get that going. This is going to be kind of a long episode, but uh, let's get that going. And, uh, yeah. It'll all work out just peachy, I think. It'll all work out just fine. Alrighty. Hey, I'm going to follow you. Okay, cool. So now she doesn't teleport. Everything looks good. She followed me. If I try to leave, she'll say, hey, get back to the forest, you bozo. Okay, fine. I guess I can't leave. Now get ready for a double battle. Time to lose this battle like I lost the other battle, except this time the event will work out perfectly. That is a promise. At least, <laughs> I hope it does. Hey, well, let's run from this battle. No! All right, now let's actually run and lose the battle. As a loss, yes. I lost, aw, oh, dang it, shoot. Losing, it's a real, a real kick in the rear, I'll tell you what. All right. So heal my Pokemon. Yes, yes, yes. They've been healed. Okay, Nurse Joy. Speed it up a little. I'm making a video. <sighs> Go. Gosh. But thank you, though, Nurse Joy. I appreciate it. So, when I step on this again, <gasps> the event plays again. Wow, I lost, and I came back, and now I'm good again to go. Cool. Looks nice. She says, let's get through the forest. Very good stuff. Cool. I read this at the end of the forest. I gotta go. The partner trainer event works perfectly. Awesome. Let's see. Are there any other notes that I wrote down? I think I mentioned really everything that I had to say. You can't surf and fly when you have a partner trainer. Add dependency to is the better method to use. You can only double battle trainers and all wild battles will be double battles. What else have I got here? I mean, that's really all there is. I showed you the functions that need to be used. Um, I showed you all the other stuff. Oh, yeah, here's one last little thing that you're I think you're gonna really like After every wild battle all of your Pokemon will become fully healed when you have a partner trainer That's just the way it is partner trainers help keep you fully healed and uh, yeah Pokemon essentials supports that as well So yeah, I think we've seen it all. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for watching you guys I gotta get back into form, but I'll address that in another video. Um, I appreciate you watching. I hopefully this helped you out, and hopefully it'll help you make a partner trainer event in your game. That'll be pretty awesome, much more awesome than the May thing that I put together. And uh, yeah, you know, follow on Twitter and Twitch. I need to use those more. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, subscribe on the YouTube's. Join the Discord that I need to use more as well. And I'm sorry, and I'll address that. But yeah, thank you again for watching, you guys. I appreciate it very much, and hopefully you appreciate this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.